you know, then it's gone back and forth, back and forth, and it's been stuck in this kind of 23 to 28 dollar range for the last, right. you know, I guess two years, right. uh, which in itself does not make any sense. You know, I'm a triple digit silver guy. You know, we're you know we're mining for every one ounce of gold, seven ounces of silver, and so you do the math. You know, today gold broke through a new high, 21.14, and closed that today, which is fantastic. It's it's dragging. It will it will drag all commodities with it. It's silver was up 75 cents today to 23.75, but you know you do, you divide 21.14 by seven. And that's where silver should be trading at. The price of silver opened at $24.36 per ounce, a modest 0.40% increase from the previous day's price and a solid 1.80% uptick since the start of the year. Keith Newmeyer, CEO of First Majestic, a major player in the silver industry, remains steadfast in his forecast of silver, surpassing the $100 per ounce mark. Reflecting on silver's price movements over the past couple of years, he acknowledges the range-bound nature of its fluctuations, typically oscillating between $23 and $28 per ounce. Despite this, Neumeyer asserts his belief in silver's potential for triple-digit prices, citing its favorable ratio to gold mining as a key factor. In contrast to gold's recent stellar performance, silver has struggled to replicate similar gains. While gold benefits from robust demand, particularly from central bank acquisitions, silver lacks comparable support and tends to rely more on speculative trading for price movements. Delving into silver's supply and demand dynamics, Neumeyer underscores a significant deficit between production and consumption. This deficit, which has persisted for several years, presents a critical issue in the global supply chain, according to him. The Silver Institute projects a structural market deficit of 176 million ounces, marking the fourth consecutive year where demand outstrips supply, further depleting global silver reserves. Considering these dynamics, silver appears undervalued in the current market environment. Moreover, silver's indispensable role in electric vehicles and solar panels due to its exceptional conductivity adds another layer to its demand profile. As noted by the Kinesis Money blog, EV manufacturers utilize silver in various electrical components, contributing to a sustained supply deficit for five consecutive years. This ongoing shortage in supply could propel silver prices upward shortly. Consequently, Neumeyer anticipates that the persistent supply-demand gap will inevitably drive silver prices higher, underlining the bullish outlook for the precious metal. Join us as we explore Keith Neumeyer's insights. Stay updated by subscribing to our channel and activating notifications. Thank you. It's always such a hard thing to talk about because um, you know you don't want to, you know, be uh, you know a conspiracy conspiracy theorist. At least I don't like to be that. Um, markets trade. Where the money is, in my view. Um, so you could call it manipulation if you wish, but I think it's just you know managing books, managing the financial system, and whatever why they why they do it that way or what's behind it. Um, you know, try to dissuade uh, investors from buying precious metals. You know, uh, you know, back in the 70s uh, when the the famous letter was written uh, about the. Comex of uh, finally uh, getting uh, gold contracts in place. You know, the, the government uh, wanted those contracts in place to scare away investors because they knew that once there was a paper market, they could then get involved in that paper market and manipulate the price um, like they did on Bitcoin. And that's why, you know, and you can argue all you want, but, um, you know, Bitcoin had no paper um, uh, instrument really until re recent times. So it's been it's become way more volatile as a result of that. 820 million ounces a year of production and consumption is 1.2 billion in 2023. The estimate for 2024 is 1.4 billion ounces of consumption. So you've got two industries, the electric car industry and the solar panel industry, who is now consuming 30% of that world supply. And those industries weren't around, you know, 10 years ago. You know, there's not enough investment going into silver. You know, you, you know yourself. So you have a $1.2 billion uh, or 1.2 billion ounces of consumption and, and 820 million ounces of production. That's a serious problem. So we're, we're six years in to uh, this deficit. The deficit in 2024 looks like it's gonna be bigger than 2023, and why is that? Because miners aren't producing enough silver for the needs of the human race. 
So we're adopting all these green technologies, all these new ways of doing things. No, you know, you still want your cell phone, you still want uh, computers, you still want fancy cars, you know, and, and we want to electrify the planet in ways that um, you know, are going to be greener. And, and it's interesting because a nuclear power plant cons consumes a ton of silver. Uh, so any, anything green, anything that is, is involved in electricity consumes silver. And we're just simply, as, as a mining industry, not supplying enough. Any kind of electronic device requires silver. And you, and you go buy a new fancy car today and you step into it and basically you're looking at a computer screen. Um, you, you go back 10 or 20 years and it was all buttons and, and switches and right. you know, quite a bit different. So even a fuel combustion car consumes way more silver today than it did 20 years ago just because of electronics. So you get into the hybrids, you get into hydrogen cars, you know, which you know, a lot of people believe that's where we're going to end up uh, being uh, or going to. Uh, these vehicles require silver the same as an electric car. Gold prices rose this week, breaking through the $2,150 per ounce barrier. This robust rally has been driven by a combination of factors, including a weakening U.S. dollar and declining Treasury yields, as investors speculate that the Federal Reserve may initiate interest rate cuts sooner than anticipated. Despite Federal Reserve Chair Powell's indications, that the central bank is not hurrying to lower rates and would require more evidence of sustainable inflation reaching 2.0%, traders remain unconvinced. Many are wagering on the possibility of rate cuts starting as early as June, especially in light of concerns surrounding a resurgence of the regional banking crisis. Keith Newmeyer, however, holds a different perspective. He is skeptical that gold's rise is solely attributed to potential interest rate cuts by central banks. Instead, he attributes the upward momentum in gold prices to governments ramping up their gold purchases and a broader trend of investors flocking to gold as a hedge against the dollarization of the global economy. Let's get back to the interview. Well, gold and silver are completely different. Uh, gold is uh, money, the granddaddy of all money. And as we de-dollarize around the world, which is obviously happening, uh, gold is your hedge against de-dollarization. Silver is, is, a, is a strategic metal. You know, I came up with that phrase over a decade ago. I've, I've seen other people also uh, uh, repeat that phrase. But I came from a copper company. When I left that copper company in 2000, um, and, and I was looking around at what I should do next, and gold was obvious. Right? But there, for, for me, there was just too many gold companies. And I looked at silver, and I, I looked at the supply demand fundamentals right. of silver, and I was amazed. And I said, this is like copper. And then I decided to put together a silver company. Everyone's uh, banking on Powell lowering rates, right. or at least that's what the scuttlebutt I've seen is. So you know, I guess if rates are getting lower, gold will go higher. But I, I don't even believe in that trade anyway. So um, I, you know, gold is going higher as far as I'm concerned because governments are buying it. Uh, there's a rush into gold because of the de-dollarization of the world. And it's got nothing to do with in interest rates or anything like that. I've been doing, I've been in the mining sector for 35 years. I've been right. talking silver for 20 years. You know, I, when I put First Majestic together, uh, silver was five, $5. And I said at the time that I expected silver to go to its all time, its, its previous high of $50. It took 10 years to do it. It took longer than I thought, but it did get to $50. I didn't expect that it was going to go down to 12 right. after 50. Right. You know, that was crazy. And it's now been, you know, then it's gone back and forth, back and forth. And it's been stuck in this kind of 23 to $28 range for the last, right. you know, I guess two years, right. uh, which in itself does not make any sense. You know, I'm a triple digit silver guy. You know, we're, you know, we're mining for every one ounce of gold, seven ounces of silver. And so you do the math, you know, today gold broke through a new high, 2114 and closed that today, which is fantastic. It's, it's dragging, it will, it will drag all commodities with it. It's silver was up 75 cents today to 23.75. But you know, you, do, you divide 21.14 by seven, and that's where silver should be trading at. Listening to someone earlier talking about the Fed as well, that you know, they, they, the, the Fed has been involved in manipulating silver prices down, and he was convinced that the Fed is involved in you know, price fixing in, 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 silver, in the silver market. And he went a little bit you know, uh, to an extreme, I thought, but um, there's a lot of people out there that believe the governments are involved in the, 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 the trading of these metals and are suppressing prices. While gold undoubtedly commands a significant portion of attention in the precious metals market, 
it's important not to overlook the appeal of silver, which remains a highly popular investment choice, particularly among retail investors who favor physical holdings such as bars and coins. Do you feel more inclined to consider silver as part of your investment portfolio? And if so, what factors would influence your decision-making process? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.